Hi, my name is Rick Truik. Um, I am from South Africa, Johannesburg, um, and I have a company called African Robot and a passion brand called Trobot Toys that I work with. And Rick, what is African Robot? African Robot's a, a company that's specializing in 3D printing, um, disruptive technologies, uh, very involved in the maker movement. Basically, I don't like to call it a company as much as a, a training platform, or it's, it's a way to really bring technology to, to South Africa and show people that technology exists here. It's right at our fingertips to, you know, we gone are the days where South Africa is like 10 years behind anything else. You know, now we have the internet and as soon as a piece of information comes out, it's, it's accessible by, by everyone. And African Robots there to help facilitate this process and train people up, um, focused on 3D printing and really getting people excited and into the technology. And yeah. you're doing training here in the, this building here. Describe the kinds of activities you're doing. Yeah, so, so I'm based in the DRZ, which is the Digital Innovation Zone. It's powered by Wits University. And a lot of the, the workshops and stuff do happen here. Um, I also do work now with RoboBeast, which is a local 3D printing company. And we also do training um, on that side, which is um, in four ways, Sandton side, um, based on their machines and their technologies. Um, yeah. And you have a um, series of toys called Trobot. Tell yes. Me about yeah. Yeah. So, so Trobot Toys is, is um, kind of a passion brand that I use to explore technologies. So I come from a background in developing games, um, myself doing a lot of character design, animation, and the same how I, I used characters and games to explore that technology. In 3D printing, I use um, I use characters as a way to explore 3D printing. So I have a, a range called Trobok Toys, which I sell the digital files. So anyone that has a 3D printer can then download the file, purchase it, download, and print as much as they want. Also make it their own, you know, they could print it in whatever color they want. You can make it whatever size you want. You can paint it if you want. You can, so, so really bringing this like creativity to the end user as well. Instead of just giving them something in a box that that's it, it's mm. give them a tool, give them that, that foundation to start themselves being creative and making things. So. And some of the toys are characters from the games you've done, and some of them are just... Yeah, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of the characters are just when I'm, when I'm inspired or, or I want to create a, a robot or I get an idea, it will be quite generic, but then a lot of the characters are based previously from some of our mobile games and and that's something I'm still wanting to explore a lot more because we with our games we get a lot of reach and a lot of downloads so so combining those two worlds together for me is really interesting going going down the line yeah and how many of how many of the free files have you have you had downloaded and how many how many pay for files have you had? um i think the 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 free files is quite tricky to gauge because um I've found them on sites, that, you know, a free file is like an MP3. If you don't say it's a paid file, people think that anyone can distribute it. So it's hard to say, like, I mean, just from the, the legitimate sources I have from my sites and places like Thingiverse, I'd say, you know, over a thousand times or so on, on, on that. But the paid paid ones, not, not nearly as much. I mean, we're looking at maybe like 50 to 60 different people um, but that's you know that each person what, what tends to happen they'll buy one but that same person will then come back and and buy a lot more and they're paying what so around ten dollars they're paying around around ten dollars from from around four dollars up to depends on the complexity okay. and the time i've spent developing something like that but and show us a couple of the toys yeah so um this is just an example of uh He's called Wasp Rider, so you know, just a little character, like a little weird rabbit character riding a little drone. Um, so that, you know, type of example, but you know, there's your your different sizes. Um, so you can print any size you want. This is bronze. This is then uh, PLA plastic. This was printed on the, a South African-made 3D printer called the Robo Beast, and we, it's so exciting just exploring the, the size you can now print on, on these machines, and not only the size, but that, that they're actually manufactured and developed locally, which I'm, I'm very excited about. Yeah. Going back to Trobok, you, were, you originally thought you might distribute these things physically by shipping them. Yeah. Explain yeah. to you what the problem was and how you solved it. So, so I mean, I, I was based in Singapore previously, and there, you know, 
toy culture and stuff is quite big, um, not only in Asia, but in America, this whole collectible culture. And from there, it's very easy if someone buys something physical to sh then ship it. But coming back to South Africa, someone will buy a toy, say, for example, the toy is $40, from South Africa to ship it, you're paying $50 for shipping alone. So, so people are actually paying more just to get the toy um, than, than the toy costs. So that's why, again, Tribok Toys is so exciting because you can, it's, it's kind of like teleporting the file. Mm -hmm. You can teleport it from here, just email it across to a connection that has a 3D printer in any other region. They can physically print the object out there and then post it on that side. And that you, eliminates. You set up agents globally to do that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, in the process as we speak, I've got um, a European agent, American agent, um, and uh, uh, an Asian agent. And now I'm just chatting to Russia and India on my last two that, that kind of will then at least have enough of the main market. But America, Asia, Europe, those are the three kind of strongest markets. And, and I've got nice... Um, just through social media and interaction on Instagram, I have very kind of good friends that I've, I've never met in person, but um, I trust them and I, I really like what they do. So they now are becoming my kind of physical agents where people can then buy the physical toys. So busy working that out, yeah.